An all-new Eye on the Bay in HD starts right now. There are seven major bridges in the Bay Area connecting 14 cities. Yet, if you want to get to this Bay Area city, you have no fewer than four bridges to choose from. Where am I? Well, it's an unforgettable place for a brilliant day trip. We're your gotta get away for the day guide. Your let's try a new place to eat guide. Even your hey, it really happened here guide. We're the tour guide with you in mind. Eye on the Bay. Welcome everyone to Eye on the Bay. I'm Brian Hackney and if you guessed Alameda, my hat's off to you. It's that night of the week when we pick a great itinerary for you to hop into your car and explore some of the rarest in the Bay Area. And in this case, we're going to visit an inhabited island that also seems as if it were plucked right out of the Midwest. Tree lined streets, block after block of stunning homes. A quintessential American Main Street. And we're going to go to a place that was voted best breakfast, not just this side of the bay, but this side of the Mississippi. Tonight, tips on off the grid and exotic dining, like this former bait and tackle shop turned into a bar and noodle shop. And where you can get blue cheese ice cream. It's really good. Or how about sushi pizza? Mm -hmm. And there's plenty to do in Alameda. Beautiful beaches, water sports. And where you can see a classic movie in one of the most beautifully restored theaters in Northern California. Lots to recommend, but first, how do you get here? Alameda is an island, which means to get there, you have to go over, on top of, or under the water. You can reach Alameda via the aforementioned bridges, or you can go underwater through the tubes. But for a more scenic journey, you can take the ferry. Either way, you're going to end up on Alameda's main thoroughfare. What's the name of the main drag? Okay, the main drag is called Park Street, yeah. and it is a classic Main Street downtown street that you just don't see very often anymore. I've strolled down Park Street with Rob Ratto. He grew up in Alameda, middle America, in the middle of the bay. Well, it's the Kansas by the bay, is what a number of residents kind of depict it as. Why? Why? Well, because it's a little bit slower, it's a little more friendly yeah. than your, your, you know, your basic people, urban. Wait a minute, do people say hello to each other here? Well, I know it's hard to believe, but they actually no. Yeah, they do, no. yes. Meanwhile, back on Park Street, one of the things that give this the flavor of a small town, this, right? Oh, this toy store here is Toy Safari on Park Street. Yeah. It's fantastic. It's 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 a, a one of a kind. There, you know, there are the big box stores. Yeah. But this one's got old toys, new toys. You come to this store, like most of the stores on Park Street, and the owners here, they've got great staff, and they don't just let you wander around wondering where the thing that you're looking for is. Yeah. Again, they're gonna ask you if they can help you here on Park Street. One thing we haven't done yet is eat. Getting a little hungry, you have any recommendations? Well, we can stop right here at Tucker's Ice Cream. Before we have our meal? Well, their philosophy is, life is uncertain, eat dessert first. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> and that would be appropriate for a place that considers itself ice cream heaven. Absolutely, it's the best ice cream in the entire world. Really? I've been eating it since I was a kid. What you, what's your favorite? Mint chip ice cream. Well, I'm sure they've got it. I mean, look at all these flavors. Vanilla bean, Rocky Road, chocolate fantasy. They've got anything you want here. Do they make it all? They make it all right here. This is a one-stop ice cream shop. I make ice cream upstairs three, four days a week. Yes, sir. Co-owner David Lee churns out super creamed ice cream upstairs at the Park Street store in ice cream heaven, where anything is possible. Right now, I'm making a Point Reyes blue cheese. Ice cream? Ice cream made with blue cheese from Point Reyes. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Wow, you didn't see it's not overpowering blue no. cheese. It's very subtle. Just a hint. That's really good, it's very light. Um, and you can imagine that with a warm apple crisp or something like that. Mm. And now that we've had our dessert. Time for breakfast. Good idea. We're right in front of Oli's Waffle Shop, which was voted the best waffle shop in the Western United States by Sunset Magazine. Mm -hmm. 
On the weekends at Ole's, the early bird gets the waffle. The line goes down the block to the corner and sometimes goes around the corner. People will wait in line for an hour to get into this place. Good morning, Rom. Hi, Dolores. How are you doing? Fine. Good morning, Brian. Hi, Dolores. How are you doing? Good, good, good. Okay. Nice to meet you. I've, I've heard about the famous Bobby Mac. Yes. It's a waffle made with Oli's secret batter, an enormous ham steak, and an egg, all for $8.50. In fact, most of the entrees at Oli's are under $10. That is good stuff. Rob, here's the Oli's. Thank you very much. And farther down Park Street. Now, the Toy Safari used to be a hobby shop. Mm -hmm. And all these old buildings, you know, were something in their previous incarnations. This one used to be what? This used to be the old Ford dealership in town. And now? Now it's the marketplace. Let's go have a look. So what's so special about the marketplace? Oh, it's all the different vendors. You've got Alameda Natural Grocer, the Beanery. You've got Patricia's Pantry, Farmstead Cheese and Wine, Baron's Meats, the Sushi King. So it's a one-stop shop for? For everything that you possibly could want even in one a, place. Even a massage? You even have a massage over here. This would be a great place to stop a, at the end of a day trip. Oh, absolutely. It's just great. You go home, you get so many things, it's unbelievable. You can find almost anything your heart desires on Park Street, the heart of Alameda. Interestingly, Alameda wasn't always an island. It was a peninsula extending from Oakland. And then to encourage shipping, at the end of the last century, a canal was dredged, making Alameda the island it is today. After the great quake and fire of 1906, rich San Franciscans came to Alameda, where they built stately Victorian homes. And even though it's just a few miles across the bay, Alameda was several degrees warmer than San Francisco, still is. So Alameda became a balmy Bay Area getaway, a resort town. Neptune Beach was a popular amusement park. In fact, it became widely known as the Coney Island of the West Coast. And Uncle Sam moved in too. The Alameda Naval Air Station occupied the island's north side. Neptune Beach is gone, the Navy left too. And over the years, as the Bay Area grew larger, Alameda was no longer a place to get away to. Although it's not a resort town now, Alameda has grown into a tidy little community in its own right. But it's still the perfect place to take a mini vacation, a day trip. Up next, things to eat. If you're in Alameda, you have to come have these noodles. At a bait shop? Also things to do and places to see. <laughs> On a day trip to Alameda. Welcome back to Eye on the Bay and our day trip to Alameda. Earlier, we took a stroll down Park Street and visited Oli's Waffle Shop. There, you might bump into Oli's owner, a nice lady named Vicky. And this is Vicky. Hi, Vicky. Now, Vicky runs the place now, but the story is that back in 1972, she and her mom and dad were just around the corner at the theater, and her dad hated the movie that was showing so much that he storms out of the theater, comes around the corner, sees that Oli's is for sale, and buys it on the spot with just $100 down. And the rest is history. Oh, and speaking about that theater, the aptly named Alameda Theater right here in downtown. And it's just one of many things you can do on a day trip to Alameda. Let's check it out. When you walk in this theater, what are you seeing? You're seeing a building that is exactly the way it looked when it opened in 1932. So we're offering the ability to travel in time. Kyle Connor owns the Alameda Theater in Cineplex. Now, you can buy a ticket and head over to the contemporary multi-screen theater, or you can go right next door and step back in time and into the classic single screen and fully restored Alameda Theater. Granted, it has but one screen, but what a screen it is. Inside the 1932 vintage Art Deco Theater, there are 500 seats on the main floor, 300 seats in the balcony, and the main screen, the biggest one in Northern California. Not to mention what is reputed to be the best popcorn 
in Northern California. Yeah. And on Wednesday and Thursday nights, the Vintage Theater actually shows a vintage film. There really are a lot of ways to uh, have a ball here. And in this particular place, you can have a pinball. Now, this is not just another arcade. This is the Pacific Pinball Museum. Melissa Harmon is curator of this family-friendly playland across town on Webster Street. Well, the one on the right is the oldest one we have, and um, it's 1871. It's a chronological tour careening through the history of pinball. And the best thing about this museum is it's hands-on. Generally, it's 15 for adults and 750 for children 12 and under. And you have unlimited access to the machines? Oh, mm -hmm. They're all on free play, so no one has to use quarters. I mean, it really is a lot of fun. It's a relaxing way to spend the day. It is. If frustrating. Ah! Correspondent Dave Stelk has another Alameda activity. Hawaii is known for its beautiful beaches and high-octane water sports, like surfing or kiteboarding. Yeah, but why go to the big island of Hawaii when all you have to do is go to a small island right here in the bay? We run a beachside windsurfing, kiteboarding, and stand-up paddle business. Jane Cormier runs a water sports company at Alameda's Crown Beach. Go ahead and stand up. Once you stand up... Jane can teach a tender-footed land lover like me to enjoy Alameda's beautiful and underrated beachfront. Alameda, I like to call it the Caribbean of the Bay. It's a little hidden secret because we've got a two mile long sandy beach with shallow water. So the water temperature here midsummer can be 70 degrees, where under the Golden Gate Bridge it may only be 50. Now there's not just a lot of great things to do here. Alameda is a great day trip because there's a lot of great things to eat as well. You remember the blue cheese ice cream? I mean, that was really good. And how about the garlic noodles at the Bait shop? The secret's out at the Grand Street Bait and Tackle Shop. Mm. Unbelievable. The bar used to sell fishing supplies. Fishing rods, reels, that type of stuff. But now? So I started doing the noodles. If you're in Alameda, you have to come have these noodles. And that's just the way it is. The Fireside Restaurant on Webster Street served garlic noodles. Servicemen from the nearby naval base had come here to slurp down a bowl. And before long, Alameda's garlic noodles were known around the globe. Then the Fireside went out of business, but the bait shop's owner, Larry Evans, picked up the recipe. But when we got the recipe, it was nothing but ingredients. There wasn't any quantities of anything. It's, it's, just, it's just full of cheese and garlic and, and onions. Larry tinkered with the dish, reverse engineered the recipe until he got it right. Mm. The best. And if you happen to be in downtown Alameda, three days a week, you have got to check out this, John Street Eats. John sets up shop next to City Hall three days a week and cooks up gourmet meals and a waiter will take your order. Hey Michael, um, I want to get the, uh, the duck confit tacos with mango cilantro and poblana cream. Yeah? The great thing about this is this. Thank you, Michael. You know, they will actually serve you on the sidewalk this gourmet food on an ordinary street corner in Alameda. So that's great if you're happy with uh, chowing down something that is street side and a little bit more urban and noisy and trafficy. But if you need to relax, if you need to take a breath, you might need something a little more zen. Owner Bala Wong says they serve Asian tapas here. It's Asian fusion tapas. I'm sorry, Asian fusion tapas. How many ethnic influences can you fuse onto one plate? That's good, let's dig in. Mantaigo spaghetti. It's a spaghetti with garlic, onions, and some mantaigo, which is a fish roll. Pork belly sushi. Very good. And then there's this Italian, Asian, Spanish tapa that was recently featured on the Food Network. Yes, it's a sushi pizza. It's a sushi yeah. pizza? Mm-hmm. Wow. What do you think? It's very fresh. Yes. Pardon me while I make a pick of myself in front of you, or you might want to avert your eyes. <laughs> Coming up, what summer treat was invented in Alameda? Stay tuned as I and the Base day trip to Alameda rolls on. Welcome back to Eye on the Bay. I'm Brian Hackney as we continue our day trip through Alameda. Now, 
Correspondent Dave Stelk has some amazing trivia about Alameda that I'll bet most Alamedans don't even know. And now, a little segment we're calling Alameda Eye Poppers. A few gee whiz, don't you know, facts and trivia that may come in handy the next time you're at a cocktail party, if you're ever at a cocktail party in Alameda. Eye poppers, things like this one, about the ice pop. In the early 1900s, Frank Epperson accidentally left some fruit juice to freeze overnight with a stick. The next day, he had a frozen treat, which in time he would sell at Alameda's Neptune Beach Amusement Park. Epperson called it an epsicle. Turns out the cold treat was a hot seller, except Epperson changed the name so that Alameda is the birthplace of the popsicle. It's up. That's not the only Alameda first. The Posey and Webster tubes linking Alameda to Oakland are giant underwater pipes, not tunnels. You're gonna have to stifle your goosebumps the next time you drive through this thing. Posey, the world's first vehicular tube. How do we know that? Because who would lie about having the world's first vehicular tube? At the turn of the last century, Charles Froling was about to build his dream house on a plot of land he inherited, but the city carved it up to widen Broadway Street and in the process afforded his neighbor a better view. So in the American spirit of, oh yeah, I'll show you, and out of pure spite, Forling built this. A not so dreamy dream house on what little land was left over. It's two stories tall, but just 10 feet wide and only inches away from his neighbor. And so today it's known simply as the Alameda Spite House. And yes, someone lives there today. And speaking of houses, notice quite a few of the Victorian variety all throughout Alameda. Which brings us to yet another Alameda eye popper. Upstaging even San Francisco, Alameda has more Victorians per capita than any American city. So eat your heart out, Juneau, Alaska, the city with the most outhouses per capita. Or how about the woman who lived in this house? She moved to Alameda when her husband was assigned to the Alameda Naval Air Station. But she could hardly contain her manic energy inside of this modest house. <laughs> now, this woman had a gift for music. She also had a sense of humor. While playing organ at this church, she was constantly cracking up the congregation. A friend encouraged her to do an act, and soon she was doing stand-up comedy at the Purple Onion Nightclub in San Francisco. And it's our last Alameda eye popper. The woman who lived in the house behind me was none other than comic legend Phyllis Diller. <laughs> There's a Phyllis Diller exhibit at the Alameda Museum, wherein they have a Phyllis Diller exhibit, including her pump organ. In fact, you could say she was an organ donor. <laughs> Maybe I should leave the jokes to Mrs. Diller. By the way, Phyllis Diller devoted an entire chapter in her autobiography about living in Alameda. Chapter three titled, Stepping in the Manure. Eat your heart out, Juneau, Alaska. Still to come, everything old is new again. Day tripping fun on the old naval base. You'll see what I mean next. Welcome back to Eye on the Bay. I'm Brian Hackney. As we wrap up our visit to the charming historic town of Alameda, yet we would be remiss if we didn't point out some of the modern benefits to you, the day tripper. And it's here at the old Naval Air Base on the western part of the island at the Alameda Naval Air Station. And man, this place, it's a day trip all in itself. Two wineries with tasting rooms are located here, Rosenblum Cellars and the Rockwall Winery. If you've got a taste for the hard stuff, then pony up to the tasting bar at St. George's Spirit, purveyors of fine vodkas, whiskeys, and liqueurs. The old naval base also boasts a native plant nursery. And if you enjoy shopping, then the Alameda Point Antiques Fair is the place to be. Held the first Sunday of every month, it's a treasure seeker's paradise, with great views of San Francisco to boot. Oh. 
And if you want to turn your day trip into an overnight, well, most of the B&Bs that used to be on the island are long gone, except for one historic place, that one. Believe it or not, the USS Hornet has overnight accommodations one Friday a month. Boy, that'll be a night to remember. Well, as we've probably conveyed, there's more that we can do in Alameda, but we don't have the time. So if you want more information about this city and all the places that we covered, log on to our website, cbssf.com slash eye in the bay. And next Thursday night, we'll do it again. We'll play concierge and plan a trip for you to spend a great weekend in and around the place where you live, the Bay Area. Come out and see it. I'm Brian Hackney. Appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.